What is going on my beautiful LARPers and LARPits? So today I am here on the show floor. This is my day three. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get as many new products uh, in this video as possible. I have meetings and stuff like that for myself as well. So hopefully I can get a good amount for you guys today. If not, throughout the week, just uh, I'm gonna try to get whatever I can. So it also, if you're wondering why I have a stick attached to this brace is because uh, when I was holding it like this the other days, people thought I was pointing a gun <laughs> while I was interviewing uh, people. So. Now I have a stick that says pistol on it, so pistol brace. Alrighty guys, so I'm here at the Smith & Wesson booth with John. Uh, John, what is it exactly you do at Smith & Wesson and what did you guys just release today? So I'm a senior new product manager, so I oversee uh, handguns, long guns, suppressors, okay. pretty much the whole gamut of new products. Awesome. So what I have here in front of me is our new M&P 5.7. Mm -hmm. And so a uh, long time coming, really cool setup on this design. Uh, do you want to go through some of the features yeah. on this? Okay. Let's go through all of it. So um, we'll go through some of the base features, then we'll talk about this barrel system. This barrel system is a really cool design. Uh, really lends itself to uh, ballistic consistency, external ballistics on the 5.7 as a cartridge. Okay. So first thing is the uh, gun's fully ambidextrous. So you have uh, ambidextrous thumb safety on the thumb safety model. Awesome. Uh, interchangeable. You can swap out uh, to left and right-hand side your mag release. Uh, your uh, slide lock, you have a left and right handed slide lock, so this gun's fully ambidextrous for left and right handed shooters. Uh, optic cut on top, so if you want to mount a red dot, you're good awesome. to go there as well. Uh, we did uh, mill the slide, that's just for uh, some reduced mass on the front end, it's not ported or anything, there's a reason for that, we'll cover that in a minute. Uh, big question everyone asks is mag capacity on 5.7, mm -hmm. right? So it's 22 plus 1. Oh, nice. Uh, we're including two mags with every okay. pistol, as well as a speed loader. We have this proprietary 5.7 speed loader that makes loading these things pretty easy. Nice. Because uh, they load like a miniature rifle cartridge, yeah. right? So they're really fast loading on the line, and uh, we include that with every gun. So this barrel system, so if you guys have ever fired 5.7s uh, as a handgun, uh, sometimes the pressure is so great that it cycles the gun too fast, and you get these blown out cartridges, blown out shoulders, frosting on the casings. Sometimes uh, uh, you've seen severed casings severed at the shoulder in the past in handguns. What we have here is a tempo barrel system, and it's actually a two-part barrel. Okay. And so you have an inner barrel and an outer barrel, and what you're looking at here is the outer barrel. This back part is part of the inner barrel. Okay. It's got a rotary lock. It kind of rotates. Oh, um, nice. Uh, like a PX4 or something initially, yeah. but it's a gas-driven barrel. So your projectile passes past some gas ports here on the front, and there's an internal uh, baffle system, so to speak, that slows the gas down but gives the initial drive to create the rotary cam and the primary extraction of the cartridge. Awesome. And so what that does is when the cartridge ignites and you have that uh, controlled uh, ignition in here, the cartridge is able to fire form in a static position, like, like an AR-15 okay. or a bolt action. Mm -hmm. it, it's able to fire form completely out. You get a good gas check, your brass fire forms, good clean brass, and it stays in that position. And of course, this is all happening in like a millisecond, right? Yeah. But it stays in that position until your projectile passes past the gas porch, which in turn drives the inner barrel out to create primary extraction. Nice. So all of those issues that we've seen with the, the blown out casings and everything in 5.7, we keep this in a static position long enough mm. to make sure that it's a good and safe fire form when the gun ignites. Gotcha. And what that translates to in external ballistics is that because we have a consistent fire form on the backside, mm -hmm. More consistent internal ballistics equals more consistent external ballistics. Gotcha. So okay. when you chronograph these, you should see much more consistent uh, exit velocities, uh, much more consistent trajectories equals a more precise pistol. Uh, we did thread the barrel on this, so if you do have a 5.7 approved gotcha. uh, suppressor, it's got a half 28 thread extension there as well. Nice. So really cool system on this awesome. for the 5.7 awesome. cartridge. And for the optics, uh, what? compatibility does it have with the optics? So this uh, optic cut is the same as what's on the Smith & Wesson Equalizer. Okay. Uh, so you can put uh, most of the major red dots on there. Uh, one of the ones we've been using on this a lot is Holosun. We've been using Holosun gotcha. quite a bit on this guy. and uh, But we've had a fun time with this. But it is essentially the same optics cut uh, profile as the Equalizer. Gotcha. And holster compatibility? Holster compatibility. We have, I want to say, five companies now that are making holsters for this. Gotcha. gotcha. Uh, and I think we have a few more as well. Gotcha. All righty. Thank you guys. Thank you, John. Sure thing. Appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll get to more guns. All righty, guys. So I am here with my gargantuan of a friend, Adam. Adam, Always nice to see you again, man. Nice um, 
adaption there? It's my pistol. My pistol brace. <laughs> I don't even know how to take this. <laughs> um, Adam, what is it exactly you do at Canik and what do we have here today? I am the marketing director for Canik USA. Okay. Um, I get to talk about the cool stuff when it first comes out. Awesome. And deny it until it does. Awesome, awesome. So what do we have here? We have what we just released today, which is the Canik Mete MC9. Gotcha. So it is our micro compact pistol. Uh, just came out prepared superior. It is a gun that people have been asking for for quite some time. We all know that this has really become the concealed carry side has become such an essential part of our rights in this country. Yep. And uh, we wanted to make sure that we could do our part. And we did that with the micro compact, four and a half inches tall, 6.1 inches long, 1.1 inches wide. Awesome. So everything awesome. that has become the industry standard for what a micro compact needs to be, can it hit that price, hit that mark in terms of features, um, you know, optics ready, co-witness, Ambi uh, comes with an inside the waistband holster, awesome. the hard case, extra mag, 12 plus one and 15 plus one. Awesome. Comes awesome. with the flush base plate and the pinky rest if you want to adapt it. Gotcha. All of that for a street price of under $400. 439 MSRP and it's going to map at $399.99. Awesome, man. Awesome. And are these already shipping today? They're not. So we released it. And, you know, something like SHOT Show, you've got to take advantage of spreading the good gotcha. word. Uh, these will be available to the consumer the very first day of March. Gotcha. And only black right now? Or are you guys going to have Three to colors to start. We've got all black. We've got flat dark earth. And we've got the two-tone black slide, brown frame. Uh, and, and they're going to come in all three of those. We'll also have some more iterations that come out very soon. But we wanted to have three that were ready to the market as soon as possible. And we'll also have an, an optics, optics ready one as well that will already be married with the M01. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I already have to say it now. It's when are you guys or hopefully you guys will ever come out with a S version of a compact. Oh. Or a subcompact. So you, you just you can't even take the thunder and have it for a day. you got to steal it. <laughs> no, from I the always game. have to have it better. Bet, maybe put a comp on the front of that too. We actually, so that's interesting that you say mm -hmm. that. So we've got the accessories package already lined up for this. Gotcha. Uh, coming with things like the thread of barrel, like a comp, um, some different, if you want night sights. All of these are available out the gate as soon as it launches. We uh -huh. will have those options available as well. Gotcha. And another question that I always get, are mags going to be readily available for these? Great question. So we've worked very hard to produce ma massive amounts of mags to, to fulfill the need in the United States right now. Not only that, something really cool about this micro compact, mm -hmm. it'll accept any mechanic mag. Oh. Meaning you can take a 20 round TP9 SFX mag, gotcha. throw it in there and it'll run. Oh, so the sweet. mags, and this mag will run in a TP9 Elite SC as well. Mm -hmm. It would run in any of them, it's just too short to run. Awesome. Obviously. But yeah, so oh, if you're out at the range great. and you want to run with some mags just out there and plank more, the 20 round TP9 SFX mag, 18 round, 15 round, they're all gotcha. compliant with this gotcha. as well. So worst come to worst, they just carry one of their extra 20 round Exactly, and it like comes that. with a 12 and a 15 anyways. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, Thanks, man. Welcome to SHOT Show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Adam, Brother, I appreciate you so much. I look forward to getting it in your hand, and putting some lead down range. Sounds and, uh, good. Maybe, you know, shoot under a truck or something. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Stay compliant. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, guys, I am here at the Rock Island Armory booth with my good friend, John McLean. Now, that's actually his real name. I know that you guys got a little pissy when I messed up Lena Michalek's name. Me and her are good friends, and I called her Lisa Michelin. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> and everybody in there was like, that's not her name, that's not her name. But anyways... John McLean here. What do we have? Or first off, what do you do with Rock Island, and what do we have here in front of us? Uh, so I'm the national training manager for Rock Island Army and Arms Corps, meaning that I uh, basically train and teach the salespeople about our line of products, and then of course when it comes to events like this, it's about educating the public about the line of products that we make. Gotcha. gotcha. Hence, hence why you came to me about this gun. Yeah, so, exactly. So this is the 5.0 that we just released uh -huh. uh, in January, so the beginning of this year and earlier this month. Okay. Um, this is a gun that's been in works for like seven years. Oh, really? So it, it's just been a really long road, and we're very happy to have it out. Okay. So what I have here is the red dot version. Uh, we also have an iron sight version. And as of right now, they're two separate models, but we are working on a way to incorporate both gotcha. as so they have one. like optic plates and stuff like that. Correct. Gotcha. Now, uh, the one cool thing about the aspect of either one being red dot and one being iron sight mm -hmm. is for the launch of the program, you'll see here that the serial number says 156 of 300. Okay. What we actually decided to do was for 150 models are going to be the red dot sight a limited edition okay. and then 151 to 300 are the iron sight limited editions. Gotcha. So you actually get um, Nice, nice, nice. Nice, Perfect. yeah. Uh, so because of that, you actually kind of get to, you know, it's almost like when you buy a custom car that's got a limited edition mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. the serial number is a certain mm -hmm. serial number. So you kind of have that working for you. I want a patch. You want a patch? A patch, like a limited edition patch. Limited, well, we can see if we can make one. <laughs> All right. So um, 
Now the Iron Safe version MSRPs for nine ninety eight, okay, and then the Red Dot version will MSRP for twelve ninety eight. But it does come with the Seymour RDS site included gotcha. in the package, okay. and that's so that's where that cost is. A couple hundred bucks for the Seymour. Exactly, exactly. Now it ships with three round or uh, not. Three round magazines, because you know, yeah. California. No. <laughs> That's probably New York or something like that. But. Yeah, exactly. So it ships with three 17 round magazines. Gotcha. They are proprietary, and we're working on getting base pads and stuff like that built for them so you can even increase the capacity more. Um, now, as far as this firearm goes, why, why all the hype about it? Yeah. The first thing you'll notice is that when you look at it from the side, it kind of looks like a striker fired. But okay. the fact of the matter is, it's actually an internal hammer fire system, so you can see the hole in there in the, uh, in the hammer. Yep. And because of that, you don't get the striker fire trigger, which is, you know, the typically it's like a, a two a, a two pound pull to the wall, okay. and then you have to get over that five pound hump to, yeah. to break the shot. This one is kind of set more around like a three and a half to four pound pull. So gotcha. as you're pulling it, you just start to get more and more pressure, but then it just kind of rolls through the break. Yeah, yeah. And I think what that does uh, as far as the trigger pull goes, it kind of helps shooters not anticipate the shot as much. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing you'll notice is that as this gun cycles, the barrel doesn't dip and angle the way normal firearms typically yeah. do when they unlock. Okay. And that's because we have a uh, RVS ram valve system, which is the recoil system in here. So because of that, the way that recoil system is designed, it just helps uh, the barrel stay in line the entire time. So gotcha. there is no dip. And I think what that's going to do is, is really help reduce the wear and tear on the barrel because it's not having to drop and then have metal rub over it and then rub back over it as it locks back in place. Rather, it just locks in place once it's fully forward. So, gotcha. and that's kind of, again, that's part of the RAM valve system that's installed in there. But gotcha. that, that's what makes this firearm really unique. Yep. Um, and because of the way the barrel can sit so low, how, how you know, small yep. the slide is as far as the, the height goes, mm -hmm. the perceived recoil of this gun is ridiculous. I mean, yeah, you shot well, it yesterday. Yeah, I shot it yesterday, and I, I love the way the recoil felt, actually. And, and so out of the box, you know, typically you have to, like, tweak springs yep. and your, your power load for your ammo. But we were shooting factory 124 mm -hmm. grain arm score ammo through a gun that was out of the box, and, yep. and that's a recoil impulse you get. Gotcha. So with with that whole recoil system in there, I think you just got a gun that is insanely flat to shoot right out of the box. Yeah. So why a square barrel? Uh, it, it was uh, as far as the way the the barrel slide and the recoil system will lock up in together. Mm -hmm. It's just easier to have a square profile mm -hmm. as opposed to trying, you know. Try and try and fit something, drill a hole or anything into a round peg is like a pain in the butt. Gotcha. By having a square flat surface to be able to to open up those those uh, the ports and areas that springs have to go into, and, and the, the ram valve system has to slide up into, it's just easier to do with a square barrel. Gotcha. Now, this part is steel, right? This Correct. part is aluminum. Yes. The lower par portion, portion, yep. and then you have the third portion, which is the polymer portion right here, right? Absolutely, yeah. So that's three different sections, correct? Mm -hmm. And we are working on a way to, to actually make it to where this this grip is actually going to be interchangeable. So we'll create some different sizes and yeah. stuff that you'll be able to oh, have a little awesome. bit of modularity to, to yep. swap out. Sweet, man. Well, John, I appreciate you like always, man. Absolutely. Thank you so much Thanks for doing by. this for me. All righty, I am here with my good buddy, Sean Burros. 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 I've known you for many, many years. Many. I'm glad you're here at SHOT Show so I can see you again. Um, what is going on today at the BNT booth? What do we have here in your hands? Uh, this is a uh, aluminum chassis. Okay. It's not a firearm. Okay. Um, it's got a handle, uh, pick rail on the top. Okay. And uh, an Aimpoint Acro P2. Okay. Because it has more battery life than the uh, P1, obviously. Gotcha. Um, and so, if if I were say shopping in Vegas, okay, because we're in Vegas right now, it's uh -huh. a shopping mecca of the world. Gotcha. And um, I needed to deploy a firearm. I could equip this with a Sig P320 fire control unit. Okay. Um, slide and barrel. Okay. Um, and deploy it because I can. Awesome. And um, point it right Defend at the myself. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, awesome. The, so BNT's made this chassis. It's the BWC9. Literally okay. stands for because we can. Okay. Um, you the you, because we can nine. Yes. Gotcha. And uh, you provide your own Sig um, FCU and choose your caliber. Um, it'll work with uh, 940 or 357 Sig. Oh, awesome. It's uh, aluminum and uh, will be available later this year. Okay. How much are these gonna actually go for? Um, my understanding is somewhere around fifteen hundred dollars MSRP. Okay, alrighty. That's the chassis, and it comes with an Acro P2. KH9 covert. This is uh, a limited edition um, 
ultimate backpack gun. So you guys are going all foldy this year, huh? Uh, two foldy things. So this is the <laughs> other foldy thing. Gotcha. Um, I have the other magazine here. Okay. So it comes with flat dark earth. The KH9, of course, is the um, double action, single action uh, sub gun of the BNT family. Okay. And this is the folding version of it, available in flat dark earth. So it comes like this, it comes with a slim uh, sling bag. Okay. And it can unfold it like this. Mm -hmm telescoping stock charging handles on the top of course and you're ready to deploy gotcha and it seems like a little complex to unfold when i did it yesterday at the range day it, it was pretty damn fast you can you can get pretty damn um, fast unfolding this thing you didn't need any practice you just no, did it yeah i just did it like my second time or something like that but yeah sweet all right what's next we this is the uh bnt apc9 pro limited it comes with the new bnt uh extending collapsible telescoping folding stock okay an 8.9 inch barrel gotcha. so you get even more muzzle velocity so it's the longest sub gun bnt mix gotcha. um in the apc line gotcha. full unibody so there's no separate handguard gotcha. true to the apc9 form Pro. you guys said that there's going to come a shorter barrel version of this right there is a shorter apc9 pro in the standard size mm -hmm. as well it, it, it comes with um, the new limited edition aluminum lower with a flared okay. magwell. And finally, an Elfman flat AR9 adjustable um, skeletonized trigger. I compete with these uh, these triggers. <laughs> They're nice. There's, there's literally no pre-travel and no over-travel. It's just... When you pull it, the gun goes off. They're, gotcha. they're fun. So gotcha. they're adjustable between two and five pounds. Gotcha. Um, and the length of pull on these mm -hmm. is insane. If you just pull, hold these, and um, so for people with long arms like me, mm -hmm. um, this is a, a joy to shoot. Gotcha. It, it's really soft and flat shooting. Yeah, I shot that yesterday, and I loved it too. And then finally, we've got the um, integrally suppressed APC-9 SD. Okay. Subcompact. So we've had an APC9 SD, but this is as short as a TP9 with a suppressor on it. And the yeah, TP9 yeah, yeah. is the smallest sub gun on the market, or the MP9, mm -hmm. TP9 being the semi automatic version of that. This is as short as that, about. Yeah, you brought the TP9 out and showed me, and it was like, I think the TP9 actually stuck out a little bit yeah. more than that. So this is integrally suppressed. We have the new uh, subcompact suppressor. Okay. You can put the longer suppressor on it, which makes it quieter, obviously. But gotcha. this is movie quiet by itself. Yeah, I shot that, it, and it was it's, super It's quiet. the ultimate home home defense gun. Gotcha. Um, why wake the children up when you're defending your home? Yeah, yeah. And exactly. why, <laughs> why not have shoulder support and be able to navigate yeah. corners easily at the same time? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so this is obviously going to come out. You have to get two tax stamps for this guy, right? This is a two-stamp gun. It's an SBR, and it's got a suppressor. Gotcha, gotcha. Will you be offering this in a pistol form, or is this the configuration mm, that you're going to offer it in? With with the pistol um, brace concept being a very fluid concept at the government level right now, yeah. um, I do not know. Gotcha. Okay, Sean, thank you so much. I always appreciate you helping me out. And thank you guys for watching this one. Let's get some more guns down. All right, guys, I am here at the Zenith Firearms booth with Sean. Sean, what is it exactly you do at Zenith? So I do a lot of different things. Uh, I do corporate training, and I also do some of the media. Uh, you might probably, you'll probably start seeing my face a lot more on uh, YouTube, on, on Instagram, on Facebook, all those things. So gotcha. hopefully you like my face. Gotcha. All righty, Sean, so what do we have fresh and new coming out down the pipeline from Zenith Firearms. So the first thing I want to mention is that a lot of people don't know that we're manufacturing in the U.S. now. They still mm -hmm. think, you know, we've been importing, but we've actually been manufacturing for about a year now. Okay. So we've been manufacturing our um, our ZF5 line. Okay. So typically this is going to be come with just the end cap um, and your standard forend. Okay. But a couple different things we've done for the ZF5 line is we've upgraded the trigger pack. We actually machine it now, mm -hmm. and uh, we weld it together. So we're not using that rolled steel. Gotcha. Uh, so the MP5 trigger is notoriously kind of sloppy. Yeah. This actually cleans it up a lot. The gotcha. reset, gotcha. the trigger pull, all that. We also use a cold hammer forging, uh, cold hammer forged barrel. Okay. And we also use a monolithic uh, cocking tube. Gotcha. All right. That. That's our ZF5, but then that translates to our PDW model as well. I'm okay. caught on a tether here. Um, so we still have the same things, but these PDW models are actually going to be shipping in February. So I know a lot of you guys have been waiting. 
Uh, but now we're going to be shipping in February. Awesome. They've gone under production, so we're excited to get these out to the public. Sweet. And what's right. this one going to run? So we have the Essentials Package, which is going to run $1,500. So okay. you get a soft case, the gun, and one mag. Mm -hmm. The Premium Package is going to run uh, right around $2,000 to $2,100. It's going to be a hard case, uh, the gun, three mags, a sling, a flash hider, um, I think that's it. Gotcha. So. All right. Our roller delayed rifles, I'm not going to talk a lot about them. These are just prototypes. Okay. We are slating for 2024 release, though. Gotcha. So. 2024? Yep. Well, so they we, look amazing already, though, man. Right? So we have the 33K, the 5.56 wow. short barrel, mm -hmm. the 33, which is the 5.56, and then the just the 3, the ZF3, which is your 308 caliber. Gotcha. All right. Let's move on to the uh, ARs, right? Let's roll. All right. All right, guys. So we are here with another offering from Zenus. What do we have here, Sean? So this is the big excitement that we have for the weekend, or okay. the week, I guess. Um, we are releasing our piston-driven AR platform, so our short-stroke piston-driven. Um, we've tried to be innovative where mm -hmm. we could be. Uh, obviously, you can't reinvent the wheel with the AR platform, but yeah. we're using the short-stroke piston, um, which has a selectable gas block, so we're going to have you know different things for suppression. If you want to okay. run a suppressor, you can turn the gas down. Um, we're using carbon fiber handguards. We're going to test those out and see how, uh, how well they perform as far as um, torture testing them, right? Gotcha. Um, the other thing we have a we have a proprietary cooling system around the barrel. It's mm -hmm. actually going to help with heat cycling and, and cook off. Gotcha. Uh, we've also done some unique things to the actual bolt carrier itself. Okay. Uh, we've done some weighting things that basically decrease the recoil impulse. Okay. As well as keep the rifle very balanced, so it keeps the weight in the center of the rifle. Nice. Um, they're ambidextrous, so you're going to have your selections on both sides for mag release, uh, bolt release, all that fun stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. We're hoping to get these in production at the end of 23, okay. and they're going to be offered in a lot of different calipers. Okay. So 556, 308, 300 Blackout, 65 nice. Creedmoor, and maybe even 277 Fury. Gotcha. And what's the price point around? You know, we haven't set that yet, gotcha. so we should be releasing that around the same time we announced them, you know, about twenty uh, mid-23. Gotcha. So, all, right. all right. All right. Sounds good, Sean. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I Always a pleasure. It. Yep. All right, guys. More guns on the way. Alrighty guys, so I was just about to leave and go look at more guns and this caught my eye. I did not know that Zenith made drones. So yeah. go ahead and talk about so, this guy. Yeah, we actually have Zenith Aerotech, which okay. is a tethered drone division. And most okay. people hear tethered drone and they're like, that doesn't make any sense. Why would you put a giant string on a drone? Uh -huh. Well, so the thing is, if you have a tether, you can actually run power to this thing hmm. all the time. So if you put a generator on this or run it through a, a just a power supply, uh -huh. this thing can stay up in the air for days. Huh. Um, so therefore, you can use it for things like military uh, usage, so radio communications, um, anti-UAV stuff you can gotcha. do, or counter-UAV stuff, uh, search and rescue, fire yeah. departments and law enforcement have use for it for surveillance. Gotcha. Um, so there's a lot of different usages, probably not for the general public. Yeah. Um, they are custom made okay. and we make them in-house, but it's one of those things that has a very specific use. And I think we're going to be seeing a lot more uh, military institutions using them for different uh, different things as we move forward in, in the 2023 and 24. And I'm afraid to ask the price point, but do you know a certain price point for this guy? You know, I'm, there is, it's varying because they're mm -hmm. all custom made. but mm -hmm. honestly, we're going to ballpark it and say they're probably going to be around 100 grand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty guys, so I am here with David from DC Precision. David, what exactly is DC Precision and what do you guys have here today? So basically I'm a small batch custom pistol manufacturer. Okay. Um, started out doing Glocks, Cerakote, Stippling, all that stuff way back in the day. I uh, got to a point where I wanted to kind of take that platform a little bit further. Kind of took it as far as I think you can take mm -hmm. it and was still had a lack of performance, I guess you could say, that, that I wanted there to be. Okay. Um, and I kind of always been inspired by custom gunsmiths, uh, 1911 Smiths specifically, uh, Joe Chambers, I'm sure not a lot of people know who, I'm sure a lot of people know who he is. Uh, he lives pretty close to me um, and someone I'd call a friend and that uh, definitely inspired me quite a bit. Okay. Um, so kind of with this platform, I wanted to take a lot of inspiration from the 1911 and 2011 or double stack 1911 side of the house and apply that to something that was based on a Glock. Okay. Um, but it's kind of far removed from that now too. So it's it's turning into its own thing. So. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and go over what's uh, what's in this whole firearm. Yeah, um, so this is the DC-9R. Uh, you guys to see that. Um, steel frame, steel frame gun, uh, aluminum frame grip module. Uh, I'm starting out with a, uh, with a Glock slide blank and a Glock barrel, but the lockup has all been modified and is completely different. Uh, most of the parts are hand fit to the gun. Okay. Um, 
super tight tolerances. Uh, like I said, everything's hand fit. Uh, guns are all easily capable of holding an inch or under at 25 yards. Got, are all these pay, uh, all these parts you manufacture all of these barrels and all that stuff? Or? No. So the frame and the grip are mine that I'm having manufactured for me. The magwells are manufactured for me. Uh, compensators, triggers, uh, all those parts are my designs, made to my specs. Uh, the slides, I start out with a with a Glock slide blank, gotcha. uh, and then the barrel is a just a, a standard. Uh, most of the time, I'm using double diamond Glock barrels to start with. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. But like I said, the barrels are fit. The parts are all matched to each other. Uh, gotcha. The lockup is all is all tight. Um, doesn't lock up like a normal Glock does. These parts here are oversized. Okay. Uh, the barrel lugs are modified. Is so. that uh, compensator integrated to the barrel itself, or can it be threaded off? It's a slit fit. It's not a thread on. Okay. So uh, it's not something. It's it's the way it's fit. It's not something that's uh, take on and off all the time type of part. Gotcha. But it can be removed if it needs to be. Gotcha. And it is 100% Glock magazine compatible. You can take okay. your regular Glock 17 polymer mag, slap it in there. P mags, ETS, MBX steel mags. Gotcha. They're all. All ready to go. And what's side. not interchangeable between that and like a normal Glock? Like obviously you just can't put the, your own barrel and stuff like that. So is the magazine the only thing that they could use on this? Uh, the only other really drop-in part on the gun mm -hmm. uh, would be rear sights uh, and uh, extractors. Um, gotcha. Other than that, pretty much everything on the gun is hand-fit to it. Gotcha. Um, it. It's meant to be ordered and built the way you want it so that when you get it, you don't need to fiddle with it. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, are these going to be like dedicated competition guns, or you, I see you have a race gun style here. Is this one more of like your your going to be your tactical type gun, and then your competition gun over here, or you're yeah. kind of yeah. So I mean, this gun would fit uh, right now since it's compensated. It doesn't really fit into very many traditional like USPSA divisions or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a non-compensated version of this gun for what may or may not be the new limited optics division. Gotcha. Uh, I've had several customers ask about that now that that's becoming a thing. Okay. Um, it'll never get on. Well, as it stands right now, it's not getting on the production list anytime soon because I'm nowhere near 500 units. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, range gun. Uh, fun gun, competition gun, if it's set up for the specific division that you want to shoot it in. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it won't be a duty gun anytime soon just because there's a lot of red tape that goes along with getting that into LE departments and stuff. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, but it could fit that bill 100%. And so. this one obviously is going to be your full-blown like open open race gun, right? Yep, USPSA open gun. And what's the difference between that one and this one? It's just that it's... Uh... Uh, I mean, it's full race gun, so you got your big giant magwell on there. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're running frame-mounted optics, charging handles, thumb rests, large compensator, uh, porting, mm. whole, whole, whole shebang. So uh, and will and it, these guns will be set up to be running on 9 Major for nine USPSA, major? Okay. so they'll make Major Power Factor and all that. So. Okay, cool. Alrighty, um, other than that, what's going to be the price point on these two, and are they available now? Yeah, you can order one now. This one's five thousand. Uh, this one is, as this one sits, this one's six thousand. This one's not uh, not one hundred percent ready for mm -hmm. ordering, or not something I'm widely advertising is like one hundred percent ready to go yet. There's a little bit of a lead time on on this gun right now. Okay. This gun, if you wanted to order one, I'm telling guys about sixteen weeks, but lead time's always subject to change uh, on these, being that they're hand built and there are outside vendors that I have to get parts from for some of it. So. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, being that these are uh, pretty pricey basically for the general populace, what sets you apart from one of these, or why would somebody want to choose something like this over, say, just uh, like a, another like 2011 or 1911 or something? Uh, I'd say probably just because of the, I guess, the uniqueness of the product. Gotcha. It's it's not a 2011, it's not a Glock clone, it's its, its own thing yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, there's not much, uh, I'm not really aware of anybody that's making Yeah. I mean, that's why I'm kind of here, because it's yeah. like, I thought there was super unique to get some footage of and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, so. exactly. It's, it's its own thing right now. It's different, now. yep. Um, so part of it is just like, some you know, some of my customers ordered them just because it's different. Yep. And, you know, money wasn't, I mean, that's why money, I would money wasn't a huge issue, so it was like, hey, it's cool, it's different. You yep. know, like the Hudson H9s when they came out, they yep. were new, they were cool, they were different. Yep. Um, and so that's kind of the direction I'm going with it, so. Gotcha. Well, hopefully um, your gun isn't as trash as the Hudson H9s, <laughs> because... Uh, I bought one of those and yeah. <laughs> but anyways, thank you so much, man. Yeah. I appreciate your time. You bet. Pleasure uh, you. Thank you so much for letting me do this for you. <laughs>